What's going on everybody? Today we're going to talk about 50 to 60 amp hour lithium iron phosphate batteries. We're going to talk about Battleborn, Tracker, Wise, Impulse, MillerTech, EcoWorthy, Powerhouse, Amped, Ally Time, Renogy, G, Redodo, Power Queen, Dakota, Ionic, Chins, and Monster Marine. To kick things off, I have no affiliation with any of these OEM battery brands that I'm going to be talking about. This is just a comparison of different specs that I was able to find publicly online. In a couple rare instances, I emailed the company for a little more clarification on some of their documentation. But in general, this is all public. You can go find it for yourself. This is also just my opinion. I'm trying to give you the information that you need to make a good decision. I'm going to lay it out to you in a manner that is easy to communicate and understand. But it's up to you to make the decision for the battery that you need. Let's start off with the lineup of batteries by their rated capacity. So the left of the lower ends all the way up to the right. You can see the range there, some 50 amp hours, some 52 to 55s, and then the 60 on the right hand side of the chart. So since they are different capacities, there's going to be a different cost associated with that. Here's how they all stack up just from a retail price standpoint, down to the 140 range all the way up to the mid 600s, with a kind of a sweet spot for the budget batteries in the 170s, and then the mid-range batteries in the 350s. The reason why we're using different capacities is because not every brand makes a 50 or a 55 or a 60. They make a range of them depending on what cells, uh, what cells they use and how they want to package their battery. So that's why we have a variety of different brands kind of within a range of batteries this time. But since these are different capacity batteries, let's take a look at it in a different way. This is looking at it by dollar per amp hour for dollar per given energy measurement, right? So all the way down just under $3 for the budget batteries, all the way up to like $13 per amp hour, which is quite a bit more. So you can kind of gauge what's two or three X plus over a given battery. That's what you're paying dollar per amp hour for any of these given batteries. Weight is a huge factor when it comes to lithium batteries. That's probably one of the main reasons why you're looking at it. All the way to the left is around 11 pounds, all the way to the right gets up there in the low 20s. And kind of in between is what you can expect. Obviously look at the color coding to see what the advertised capacity is as well. But there's a range of weights for these particular batteries that you can compare right now. The dimensions of these batteries are very different. So here's the kind of the lineup of what we have. And you can eyeball that there's some differences in the dimensions. Some are tall, some are wide, some are long. And so what I did is I took all their published dimensions, put them in a 3D CAD software so you can kind of compare them to scale. And now we're going to overlay the overall dimensions. You can see some of them are 10 and a half inches long or seven and a half inches long, five inches wide, seven inches wide. And why that matters is because a 10 and a half inch wide battery may not fit for you. So when you're looking at a battery, take a look at the specs. If you're super sensitive in a given dimension, there may be one of these here that line up best for you, especially if you need multiples, like a 36 volt setup or something like that. And here they are with given batteries that fit, that fit within those buckets. Getting into the technical specs of the batteries, uh, all of these are lithium iron phosphate batteries and they do have an advertised continuous discharge rate. This usually doesn't matter in lead acid land, but when it comes to lithium batteries, that's something to pay attention to. So a 1C discharge rate for a 50 amp hour battery is 50 amps. It's pretty basic. One capacity, 1.2 gives you another 20%. Two gives you double or 100 amp hours. And why that matters is let's just say you have two 12 volt batteries, you're making 24 volts with that and they're 50 amp hours. And when you turn your trolling motor on high, if your trolling motor pulls 55 amps, it's gonna trigger the BMS on those batteries to cut out. And so you wanna pay attention to how much load you expect to put through that, and maybe you need to run it down on eight instead of 10. But you wanna know that going in so you make a good decision there. Um, some of these are 1.2C, Monster Marine, 2, 2C discharge rate. So you can take their 50 amp hour battery and pull 100 amps out of it continuously. Maybe that'll work for you. Uh, certainly pay attention to that particular metric. Bluetooth capability is something that I now have and I certainly appreciate more than I did before I had it. Um, it gives the ability to just kind of see what the battery is doing, right? What temperature is it? Maybe that matters in the cold uh, or if it's too hot. Um, how many cycles have you gone on it? Just because something good to know. But most importantly is the remaining capacity. Um, you know, you don't always have to charge these batteries to 100% when you want to take them out. They're actually most happy in the like 20 to 80% range. So if you were going to go fishing one day and it's at 85%, you probably don't need to charge it. But it's good to know that. Otherwise, you're just going to end up like most of us and just plug it in, get it to full charge and take it out. Again, that's a nice to have. It's not a must have. I would find it to be most valuable in a multiple battery configuration. You got three 12 volts making 36. 
it'd be good to know that they're all kind of running that same. You don't want one battery at 70%, one at, and the other two at 95, right? That one battery is doing more work. Bluetooth connectivity will help you understand that. Here they all lined up by cost and which batteries have Bluetooth. All of these batteries are gonna have the basic fundamental BMS protections, low voltage, high voltage, overcurrent, short circuit, but where some of these differ is gonna be on low temperature charging cutoff. Now that probably won't matter to you if you live in South Florida and it ever freezes, but if it does freeze where you're at, you wanna know if your battery is protected or not. So if you were to charge a lithium battery below freezing or some OEM, say 24 degrees, you can damage the battery by a process called lithium plating. So what some of these batteries have is a charging cutoff by temperature. If the battery gets too cold, can't charge it. You can still discharge it. It's the charging where the problem is. So if you're in that situation, you want your battery to protect itself, these are the batteries you want to consider. They're lined up again by cost, and the green ones have low temperature charge cutoffs. The warranty is where we're going to finish off, and that's really a fun one because it, there's just a wide range of warranties and really the support that comes along with it. Can give you a 10-year warranty but if I never answer the phone is that any good for you um, so some of these range from like a one-year warranty all the way up to you know, your Miller Techs your impulse Dakota powerhouse Battleborn all have higher-end warranties and you want to certainly pay attention to that and understand how important is being able to pick up the phone and call someone is that to you do you want to just roll the dice take the cheapest battery or do you want to make sure you have some support that's your call there's a battery for everybody in this realm but you need to understand if that's important to you. Some of these are like a full 10 year warranty, right? The Miller Tech, they're gonna take care of it. Uh, some of them are prorated. There's one or two tiers, and maybe by tier two, it's like a 30% discount code at the end of life of your battery. All of these have particular nuances. They look at cycle life, they look at how many, you know, how you've used the battery to determine what type of warranty coverage you get. I'll link whatever warranty manuals I can find in the description below along with links obviously to the batteries themselves so you can take a look at them. With that I hope you are equipped with the information you need to make a good decision for your batteries. Um, if you're not sure what size battery you need, check out this video right here. It'll help you get sized up for what battery you need. Links are all in the description. We'll see you next time.